I would tell you to continue enjoying your food. I feel bad for the folks who are still going for the buffet, but we're going to do our best to stay on time. So um, I wanted to, again, thank Anne and her team for the morning, AG, John Noble, and the panelists. Let's give them a round of applause. It was, it was great to have the program this morning. We've got a, a couple things to do um, throughout lunch here. We're going to have a few reports and a few more recognition pieces, and then we are going to um, come out of the room so that we can clean up and enjoy our after be ready for our afternoon. Uh, I'm going to invite up Karen Cartier. She is with Dairy Farmers of America, and she serves as the current president of the New York State Ag Society Foundation. The foundation was started several years back with the goal to support the ag society and support um, youth in ag and ag careers. Uh, without the ag society, programs like this one wouldn't be possible. Um, one of their largest endeavors is the ambassador program. You met some of those folks early this morning and the ambassador program has been a huge success, especially with the folks um, for Katie Carpenter Bigness, and without her and the support of the foundation, that would never happen. There's well over 100 uh, young folks who've been through that program, and uh, we've been able to touch them because of their support. Karen. All right, good afternoon. Thanks, Mark. So it's my honor, my privilege, to speak to you today on the New York State Ag Society's foundation. It was launched in 2012, so we're actually celebrating uh, our 10th year this year. So speaking on behalf of our 10 member board of directors, which by the way are a group of highly passionate and energetic folks, we're very proud of the 10 years of the foundation and all of the support and grassroots efforts that we've been able to contribute in the areas of ag education. So donations and investments have grown through the years and we've really struck a nerve on how we make a difference uh, with the New York State ag industry. But where we found a niche and we really kind of have a, a specialty and a reputation is through the program Mark just mentioned, which is our Ag Ambassador Program. So I hate to bother you while you're eating, but if our ambassadors could come up uh, to the front here, maybe on either side of the stage, just so folks know who you are, have the opportunity to uh, network with you. So like Mark said, uh, in this program, we help to develop leaders uh, from the ages of 18 to 25, and we expose them to different issues discussed here at the forum. We pair them with industry mentors. Uh, we encourage them to interact and have conversations with decision makers and opinion leaders. Um, and really, at the end of the day, also helping to provide some unique professional opportunities with the different ways that we touch them throughout the year. So I actually saw the power of this in action last night. We paired this great group of uh, young leaders uh, with the current lead class, also uh, another uh, great group of leaders. Uh, and they had their mentors and some industry folks in the room as well. And so this is exactly what we set out to do. Uh, and it was fantastic to see the conversations, to see the networking and the goodwill that was established uh, with, with these young leaders. So this year we have actually nine ambassadors. We had 12 uh, that registered. We have nine with us today at the forum, uh, many of whom, as you saw on the screen, are enrolled in some of New York State's great uh, education ins institutions, including Morrisville, uh, Finger Lakes Community College, and a few have recently started new careers uh, in the industry as well, so standing alongside us in agriculture. So these folks will, will push our alumni group, like Mark said, uh, over 100. Uh, as we uh, exit out of the forum here. So that's 100 young leaders that the ambassador program has touched. So as a former lead participant myself and a board member, I really know the impact that these programs have. Uh, I've, I've really seen it uh, firsthand. I'm also a foundation donor. Uh, so uh, we know the impact that all of uh, this effort has. And it goes without saying we would not be here today uh, if not for the generous support that we've received from some of you here uh, in this room and hopefully all of you here in the future. So in 2022, we have some ambitious uh, ideas uh, for the program. We look to contract with a professional coordinator to take our ambassador program hopefully to a new level. Uh, and we're engaging the support of an industry advisory panel, so really looking to bring together uh, all facets uh, here to help our, our program move forward. But in order to do this and more, uh, we need additional resources and I would encourage you to join me 
and making a gift to the foundation. It's easy, I didn't bring my program book up, but if you open it up uh, on the left-hand side there, you're gonna see uh, the QR code uh, that will uh, help us continue to support that program. And all gifts uh, are certainly appreciated as we move forward. So your gifts go directly uh, to where the need is. Uh, just this year, I want to give you a little uh, picture of what we've done. The foundation has made significant, a significant donation to the National Ag in the Classrooms annual conference. It's going to be held here uh, in New York State this summer, so that'll showcase New York agriculture kind of through the lens of ag education. Additionally, the foundation supports uh, the cost of, of these folks uh, attending our forum and our summer uh, leadership program that we do as well. So your support and generosity matters, uh, and it has impact and is greatly appreciated. I can't speak of the ambassador program without thanking uh, a really uh, very impactful supporter, and I, I didn't see him here today, but uh, Elwin Voss, uh, his leadership and commitment uh, to driving this program forward really cannot be uh, understated. So thank you to Elwin. I also want to thank a six-year board member, and I know he is here, uh, Terry Hughes. Uh, he's retiring off the board, uh, but his contributions through the years have been uh, very significant and valuable as well. So, and while the ambassador program really has taken on a life of its own and kind of is our labor of love, uh, the foundation's roots are deeply entwined in the success of the Ag Society. So through the generosity of the American Agriculturalist Foundation, we've had the ability to bring in top-notch speakers like what we heard this morning uh, and to sustain the needs of the Ag Society itself. So your gift uh, helps to support the vitality of this 190-year-old organization so soon uh, to celebrate its bicentennial. So on behalf of the Foundation Board, we thank you. We can make a difference, uh, and we will continue our very best in our commitment uh, to nurture and grow the uh, New York State Ag industry. So thank you, and thank you all. Thanks, Karen. Thanks again for your leadership on the Foundation. As you know, one of our missions uh, at the Ag Society is to continue to recognize uh, folks who have been instrumental in promoting agriculture. Um, at this time, there are several award winners that we'd like to recognize for the Cap Creole Journalism Award. Many of you may know Melissa Osgood. Melissa has been uh, the chair of that. She unfortunately couldn't be here with us. She was also the person that helped us put together all the award videos. So for those of you who know her, um, please say thank you. She did a great job. I'd like to invite Ann Noble Shepherd to step in in her place to uh, give out that award. For over 40 years, the Cap Creole Journalism Award has recognized informative and timely news stories about agriculture in the state of New York. Thank you to the Zeta chapter of Alpha Gamma Rho Fraternity at Cornell University for once again financially supporting the award. David said is the winner of the printed feature for his Finger Lakes Time story titled The August That Almost Killed the Finger Lakes Industry But Spawned a New One Instead. David is also the winner of the printed series for his Finger Lakes Times column, The Wine Ranger. The Dean of the Cornell University College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, Benjamin Holton, is the recipient of the editorial award for his column in The Hill, asking Congress to take action against climate change and protect our food supply. Troy Bishop is the winner of three categories this year. First, in the printed news category for his country folk story on stress management for women in agriculture. He also received Blog's online feature accolades for his OnPasture.com column, What is the True Meaning of Grazing? Finally, his Combining Wheat to Feed New Yorkers photo for country folks is this year's photograph winner. In the Audio Video News Clip category, WIVT Binghamton wins for their story on Trinity Valley Farm. The final winner for 2022 is Jefferson County Agricultural Economic Development for their video, This Milk is for You, a tribute video to first responders and frontline workers during COVID-19. Congratulations to all of our 2022 Cap Creole Journalism Award winners. Thank you for being advocates for New York's agricultural industry. Thank you. Troy, Jay, and Jim, can you join in and here at the side of the stage? We have a little token for you. Thanks so much.
Our next honoree is the Harlem Valley Homestead. I'd like to invite Zachary Keppel to the stage and Anna Marahoff as well from NICAM. Here she comes. With the financial support of Cargill Inc., the New York State Agricultural Society Farm Safety Award recognizes producers, mentors, and collaborators that proactively work to protect the health and safety of farm employees by reducing the incident of work-related injuries and illness. Jim Caraba of the New York Center for Agricultural Medicine and Health has high regards for the owner and staff of Harlem Valley Homestead. Their safety philosophy can be summed up in six words, safety first, people first, and safety matters. Agriculture ranks among the most hazardous industries in the U.S. Thorough onboarding of new farm employees and continuing education of existing staff are important priorities for successful safety programs anywhere. Harlem Valley Homestead does this and more for the 11 staff who work hard for this 250-acre livestock and produce operation located in Wingdale, New York, Dutchess County. All employees take part in annual safety training exercises, and the farm has standard operating procedures for heat awareness, storm preparedness, livestock handling, and more. The New York Center for Agricultural Medicine and Health staff conduct annual safety audits and OSHA staff are available for employees to ask health and safety related questions. The farm also has a plan to protect employees from airborne infectious diseases like COVID-19. Unfortunately, mishaps do happen, but when they arise, staff use a root cause analysis to determine how to avoid similar issues in the future. Owner Michael Armarillo, management and staff all agree that Harlem Valley Homestead is one of the safest farms around. Congratulations to Harlem Valley Homestead for being our 2022 Farm Safety Award winner. Thank you for your commitment to keeping employees and customers safe. Anna. Hello, everyone. I wanted to talk a little bit about NICAM. So we do a lot with farm safety and health services, and I wanted to get a little info out to you. First off, we do free farm safety trainings. We have a number of topics. We're always adding more. So animal handling, skid steer training, roadway safety for ag equipment. We also do free training in CPR and first aid, either basic or certification. We do fire extinguisher training. We have a hands-on demo for that. And we also do surveys, just looking around the farmstead at hazards, recommending improvements for people to make with regards to safety. Um, we have a lot of print materials. We work with a really talented illustrator who was recognized by the Ag Society last year, Salvador Sanz and he does a lot of work with us with safety print materials. We do respirator fit testing for folks who are required to wear respiratory protection. We do all of the training for the workers, the medical clearance, and then the actual fit test. Just because someone has a respirator, we want them to be actually protected with that. Um, we have replacement PTO shields where people can get easy to install, easy to size replacements for any missing or damaged or broken PTO shields. So if anyone is a farmer in the room, your homework is to go check your shields. It's a good time of year to do that. Um, the last thing I want to mention is our farm safety fund. The John May Farm Safety Fund is available for small and mid-sized farms. We pay for half of a safety improvement. Uh, cost share up to $5,000. So if you're interested in any of our services, give us a shout. There's our website information, an email address, and our phone number. Thank you all. Thanks, Anna. It's my pleasure to bring Han Kunze to the stage to present the Distinguished Service Citation for our 2022 Honoree Pat Hooker. This award is sponsored by New York Farm Bureau. If there are New York Farm Bureau staff in the audience, will you please stand? Come on, Patty, I see you out there. 
Yes, thank you everybody. Thank you New York Farm Bureau for, um, for this. Hello Hans. Go ahead. Thank you, Mark. Just before lunch, we had a nice opportunity. Mark and Pat Hooker and myself, uh, we did a FaceTime or Facebook interview with Pat, and uh, I hope you get a chance to take a look at it. So, I am very honored, to say the least, to present to you our 2022 New York State Agricultural Society Distinguished Service Citation Award to Patrick M. Hooker. <clears throat> Hopefully you've had a chance to see his bio on page 19 in your forum program. Across from that page is the New York Farm Bureau's full page congratulating Pat. Why don't you grab your program right now, open it up, to the dead center, and you'll see. And you'll acknowledge that, Pat, you are the f forum's 22 centerfold of the year. <laughs> so, that's a really nice uh, congratulatory ad that the Farm Bureau uh, put in there, and uh, well deserved. Pat's credentials are numerous and prestigious as he excelled in everything he did from his high school and college years to working with the New York State Assembly, to working with the New York Senate, to New York Farm Bureau, to becoming Commissioner of Agriculture, then on to New York State Director of Agribusiness Development. If that wasn't enough, in 2013, Pat was promoted to New York State Deputy Secretary of Food and Agriculture, which included the oversight of the State Liquor Authority and the New York State Department of Ag and Markets. Wow, that's impressive. There isn't time to elaborate further on his many accomplishments over his 37 years. However, one stands out in particular Pat has earned a deep respect from his numerous associates in government, production agriculture, agribusiness, education, ag organizations, and all of us. Pat brought that charisma and enthusiasm, that spark to New York State agriculture. Despite plenty of ag industry challenges over the years, he maintained that positive can-do attitude that radiated throughout the state. Challenges to Pat became opportunities for betterment of New York agriculture. I remember a forum many years ago, 2007 that was. That was the day on which Pat was appointed Commissioner of Agriculture. Some of you, many of you probably were here. What a fitting venue for all of us to celebrate that with Pat. Later that evening, Pat delivered a most eloquent, heartfelt, committed to agriculture speech. What a standing ovation he received. You would have thought that the Bills had won the Super Bowl. Well, Pat, here we are. You and your lovely wife, Karen, are still probably adjusting to retirement from each of your respective wonderful careers. We cannot begin to thank you enough for your dedication to New York State agriculture through your tireless efforts to maintain that delicate balance among your many associates and friends in government, agencies, and agriculture. You can be and should be very proud of your service. We sure are proud of you. So on behalf of the New York State Agricultural Society, we congratulate you in being named 2022 recipient of the Distinguished Service Citation, and we ask that God bless you and your family in your retirement. Congratulations.
<laughs> Pat has agreed to share some more wisdom with us. Whew. I cannot possibly begin to thank you in the couple of minutes that I have here to do it. Uh, I was thinking two themes when I was told this by Hans, and, and Hans, Mark, Ann, leadership of the Ag Society, wow, thank you. But the two things I was thinking of was the agricultural society itself and my relationship there, and, and then the second thing is the farmers of the state, which uh, <laughs> maybe put the spring in my step, Hans, I'm not sure, but I just want to say that, you know, this is my fifth decade coming to Ag Society meetings. I started in the 70s in the FFA. I didn't, I didn't do the Chuck Schumer look then, um, but I loved it. FFA changed my life. It directed the course of my life. From the very first time that my boss at the farm kicked me out to go to the Oswegatchi FFA camp. So I loved being exposed to all the ag leaders in the state um, in the 70s in FFA. When I came here in the 1980s, it was long before the ambassadors program and it was before Lead New York. And for a number of years, I was the youngest member of the Ag Society. Well, it, me and Dick McGuire were the youngest members of the Ag Society, but um, I, you know, the, w what the society did though was present that thoughtful uh, forum every year, chance to see people, renew friendships, all the things, that, all the reasons that we still come to the society for, but the awards and the prestige that you put upon the industry, the journalists, the farms, and so on was, was just wonderful. As Hans mentioned, I was um, announced as Commissioner of Agriculture here uh, a number of years ago, and then four years later, I was also relieved of those duties as Commissioner of Agriculture when a, a new governor was elected, and uh, that happened in a broom closet uh, on, uh, on site that day, and we still had to do the speech that evening as well. But um, thanks to many good friends in the industry, uh, I was able to stay in that administration and continue on. And I'll tell you, I just... I want to say that um, I don't know if it was whatever earnestness I brought to it at the time, but I was deeply grateful to go uh, into the next administration and to continue to serve because the, uh, not only was it you know, the Ag Society and, uh, and that that inspired me all, all those years, but what, it, what really drove me was the farmers in this state. The farmers have, uh, Farmers have always been my, my heroes. And so it was a pretty easy thing for me to be in this role of, of service to, uh, to agriculture. Uh, many of you are farmers, most of the members of the society are, but most of the rest have a very strong connection. And so we all know that no one gets up earlier, no one goes to bed later, no one helps their community more. After all, as my father said, they're the ones in the community when everybody else has gotten up and, and gone to work. They're the best neighbors, and this has always been the, my experience my entire life. And I've worked on uh, farms, whether it's uh, neighbors or, or our own, uh, for over 50 years now. And um, they are the people in the community that everybody turns to. We continue to do that uh, today. They got the longest ladders. They got the biggest tractors. They've got the longest trailers and trucks and wrenches. And when you start to do something with that borrowed equipment, they're also like, have you thought about this? Because they've seen all the bad things that can happen when you do the things wrong. And they're fearless. And so when I got a chance to uh, work for them, and I've never, although we own a farm, I've never farmed full time. I wasn't smart enough or brave enough or fearless enough to be a full time farmer, but I guess I was plenty smart enough for Albany. Uh, but it's been the honor of my life to have had a career that let me promote, protect, defend my heroes. So if you wonder anything about me, uh, remember this. I tried every single day in my career to keep the bad ideas and the ill-informed people off your back. And I thank you for your faith in me all these many years, and Karen, I thank you for all your faith in me in all these many years, and our two wonderful children, they are fabulous kids, and the reason is sitting right over there next to me. And so I'm, I really deeply appreciate this award, and, um, 
it, it means everything to me. Thank you very much, Hans, Mark, everybody. <laughs> Okay, you guys remember Karen from the foundation and she said she didn't have her booklet with her, right? I happen to have the booklet. How many people have this book? Can you show me it? That would be fantastic. Okay, if you do open it up to the first page, the inside cover of the first page looks something like this. Can you prove that to me, Will? Yes, excellent. There's a little flow chart, a little flow code in there that little piece there. If you hover your cell phone over that, it'll pop up a little thing on a phone that says flow code. You press that button, it'll bring you to the Ag Society Foundation donation page. It's um, hard to stand up in front of a room and ask for money, but I guess I'm not ashamed. I would love for you to see if that flow code works, and if it does work, I would love for you to consider giving to the Ag Society Foundation. That foundation, like we've said several times, helps us do lots of things. And without the support of our sponsors, our exhibitors, and folks like you and our membership, we can't do it. So please consider that. We are up for break. So thank you so much uh, for a great lunch. We are going to ask you all to continue to network outside so we can turn the room over. Um, we'll have some music playing, and then we'll invite you all back in here around 2.15 for our afternoon panel. Thanks very much. <laughs>